Greetings, greetings. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I come, this is Prophet Lester, I come to you uh, with uh, a second lesson. This is our lesson number two from the new believers class. And we are going to learn today about the Bible, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible, which is the word of God. So to start with, we want to know about the Bible as uh, God's special book. The Bible, as we know, this is the word of God. Hallelujah. So the Bible is the word of God and it is God's special book. And the word of God, which is the Holy Bible, is God's special book. Uh, it is not like any other book, but it is a supernatural book. It was written by many different people who wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We find this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible is the world's best seller, and it consistently outsells any other book. The Bible has been translated into more languages than any other book in the world. It was originally written in three languages, namely Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. The Bible you have, you have has been translated by dedicated people so that you can have God's word, thoughts, and plans. The Bible is also one of the oldest books in the world. The most ancient portions of the Bible date back almost 4,000 years. Yet it is still most modern, the most modern book in the world today for in it, we will find the answers to life's greatest questions. Uh, there are many questions that we ask, and the life's greatest questions are, where did I come from? We find the answer in the Bible, in the Word of God. Why am I here? We find the answer in the Word of God. Where will I go? We find the answer in the Bible also. Even though the Bible is made up of 66 smaller books, it has only one central theme, and that is God's loving plan to rescue mankind. At the front of the Bible, you will find a list of the 66 books that can be found in the Bible. And the Bible is divided into two sections, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament tells us about God's work with his people before the birth of Jesus. The New Testament tells us about Jesus' birth, his life, his great ministry of healing and forgiveness of sin, for, for, for sick and sinful people, his death on the cross, his being raised from the dead, and his ascension going back to heaven. Also, it also tells us about the continuation of his healing, forgiving ministry through those who saw him after his resurrection, those who follow Jesus' teaching do many miraculous works, just as he said they would do. We find this in uh, John chapter 14, if we read verses, verse 12. And the teaching of those who saw him after he was raised, after he was raised from the dead, is contained in the epistles, which is the letters, he, these were written within the first 50 years after Jesus' resurrection, and they make up almost half of the New Testament. They make up almost half of the New Testament. So I want to encourage you to study the Bible. The most important relationship you can have in this life is with God. Through reading the Bible, you come to understand what God is like, his thoughts, his plans, and his promises for you. Uh, the list in the front of the Bible will help you find the page number of the part of the Bible you may wish to study to help you find specific parts of the Bible. The, translator, the translators, they organize the Bible, uh, the text into books, and then chapters within the books and verses within the chapters. For example, if you find uh, a reference written Genesis 3, 
hyphen one five. This would mean the book of Genesis, chapter three and verse fifteen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want today to teach you the world's greatest promise. And this is found in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 in the Bible. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. That is the world's greatest promise. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son. So what is the purpose of the Word of God? in our lives. What is the purpose of the word of God in our lives? I want you to, I want to make particular reference to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And the Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness that is second timothy chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. the other scripture reference i want to give you for why the purpose of the word of god uh, is second peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 4 the holy scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation hallelujah sorry his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness through this he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you might partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires so this is the purpose for the word of god this is the word purpose for the word of god and the word of god what it means is the word of God, it produces life. The word of God produces life. Hallelujah. And I want to make particular reference to John chapter 6, verse 63. And the words I have spoken unto you are spirit and their life. Hallelujah. So the word of God is creative. It is creative. It produces life. It says, the words I have spoken unto you are spirit and their life. So it is creative. It produces life. By the word of God, the Lord, by the word of, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And they are steady host by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. This is Psalm uh, 33, verses 6 and 9. Also read Hebrews uh, chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hallelujah. And the word of God, the word of God is like water. The word of God is like water. We all know water. We drink water every day. We use water in our daily lives. And we know the properties of water. So the word of God is like water. What do we mean when we say the word of God is like water? Number one, it cleanses. We start life in the kingdom of God totally washed clean by the word of God. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. This is John chapter 15 verse 3. Also make reference, check also Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 27. Number two, it keeps us clean. So when it cleanses us, it also keeps us clean. The word of God planted in our hearts keeps us from sin. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is Psalm 119 uh, verses 9 and 11. Hallelujah. And the word of God is also a light unto our lives. The word of God is also a light unto our lives. The word of God is also a light unto our lives. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it 
as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in you in your hearts. This is Second Peter, uh, chapter one, verse nineteen. So, <clears throat> I want you to understand that it gives light, it gives understanding in a dark world. The commands of the Lord are radiant, meaning they give light to the eyes. You can check uh, Psalms chapter nineteen, verse eight. I believe, uh, as you are watching, you have a notepad and you are taking down the scriptures, because I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but I'm just going to guide you. Hallelujah. You will read most of the scriptures also by yourself for you to receive more understanding. Meaning, for you to go through this course, the New Believers class, you need your Bible, you need a pen, you need a notepad as, we, as you follow. Hallelujah. So that you take down notes and you take down scriptures. So it gives understanding in a dark world. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. This is Psalm 119. And uh, you get it from verses 105 and 130. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, the word of God is uh, the spiritual food. The word of God is spiritual food. The word of God is spiritual food. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This you'll find in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. So as we are learning about the Bible, we are making particular reference to the word of God. We are making particular reference to scriptures, where you find it in scriptures. When we say it is spiritual food, it means it causes spiritual growth. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 and 2 says, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Hallelujah. So there are stages uh, in, 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 the spirit, in spiritual life. You start as an infant and you grow just like a baby who has been born. You cannot be taking bones. You cannot be taking chewing meat but you start by taking milk. And this is what the scripture is telling us. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So crave pure spiritual milk. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. God's aim for each of us is expressed in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 12 to 15 that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the Christ, attaining to the whole measure and fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. So the word of God is also a seed. The word of God is also a seed. The word of God is also a seed. In Luke chapter 8, verse 14 and 15, Jesus told his disciples the parable of the sower. And in verse 11, he said, the seed is the word of God. God will for, will for our lives, is God's will for our lives is fruitfulness. Hallelujah. So God's will for our lives is fruitfulness. And Psalm 1, verse 3, we also check that scripture. And 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 tells us, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Hallelujah. God's word is also a sword. God's word is also a sword. God's word is also a sword for being in battle. For those who know battle, who have seen battles uh, from the old, you know that they were fighting with swords. They went to war with swords. My Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Also check Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and note that Jesus used the word sword against Satan in his temptation in the wilderness. In Luke chapter 4, you read verses 1 to 14. 
uh, giving us an example of how we can use the word of God in our own times of temptation. So there will be temptations uh, in this walk of faith. There will be temptations, but we can use the word of God as uh, a sword. The word of God also helps us to pray. Hallelujah. The word of God also helps us to pray. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. That is John chapter 15, verse 7. Ask whatever you wish means that ask as one who has the right with authority to command. Hallelujah. So we have the creative word. The creative word is there in our mouth. We just need to speak. We just need to speak it. And the word of God is also uh, strong in us. The word of God is strong in us. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, up to 27. Check verses 24 up to 27 of Matthew 7. And Jesus said that the wise man who built his house on the rock was a picture of those who hear his word and obey it. The word of God builds inner concrete within our lives so that no matter what may come against us, we will stand strong. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I believe uh, this lesson has been, you have learned a lot about the word of God. I believe you have learned a lot about the word of God. And I want to give you now uh, a Bible quiz. I want to give you now a Bible quiz. Hallelujah. I want to give you now a quiz for what we have learned for you to put into practice. Now, question number one is how many books are in the Bible for two marks? Question number two is the most ancient parts of the Bible date back how many years for one mark? Uh, number three is which life's greatest questions does the Bible answer for three marks? What is the world's greatest promise and where is it found in the Bible for one mark? Number five is what is the purpose of the word of God for three marks? Uh, number six is give five things that the word of God is in our lives and explain. That is for 10 marks. Hallelujah. May God bless you. I believe uh, you're getting blessed as you attempt these quizzes uh feel free also to write to us send feedback to us on whatsapp plus 263-782-095055 the number on your screen the whatsapp prayer line on your screen that is our international number feel free to send us your feedback and your thoughts and if you have any questions to what we are teaching about feel free to uh, ask your questions and we will gladly respond god bless